Greetings humans, welcome to End the Conspiracy. Today we're going to talk about the video, what they secretly told us during the halftime show at the Super Bowl 2019 from Hacking the Headlines. Hey everybody, welcome back to Hacking the Headlines. I wanted to go over this year's Super Bowl halftime show because as usual, it was filled with occult and satanic symbolism, as well as these sick agendas that they're constantly trying to push down our throats. And they use their false idols to do it. And this year it was Maroon 5 was the main headliner. And then they had big... Okay, start off, I'm not a big Maroon 5 fan. I've seen some of their videos, a couple of their songs I like. Just not the biggest fan. Big Boy from Outcast. I don't know his music itself. I know some of the earlier Outcast stuff. You know, sorry, Miss Jackson. Hey, uh, you know the normal stuff. Travis Scott. I have no nothing about him. Big Boy from Outcast and Travis Scott performing as well. And I will say that a lot of the symbolism and stuff was more subtle than other years that I've seen, but it was all still there and just right beneath the surface and subliminal. Which it's got a lot more tattoos than I thought he did. Which is even worse in a lot of ways, but let's get right into it. So it starts out in the dark and there's a giant outline of the letter M. Now I know people are going to say that the M stands for Maroon 5, but no it doesn't. Yes it does. Uh, Maroon, I actually looked this up, Maroon 5 actually used this M stage um, for their uh, Uprising tour back in 2012. It's M for Maroon 5. It represents Freemasonry, and in this case, they also use it to represent the pyramid. Okay, the actual symbol for Freemasonry is the compass and the square, not an M. Pyramid and the letter V, which will become more than obvious here in just a second. But the letter V stands for five. The pyramid is important to them because of their obsession with ancient Babylonian mystery teachings that came out of Egypt, and also it represents the different steps that one must take through these secret societies in order to reach the light of Lucifer. Okay, um, if these societies are so secret, how does you, everybody know about them? Um, I know the Freemasonry, there's been a lot of Books and scholars and stuff that have gone through the years that have actually gone through and members of the Freemasonry have talked about it, things like that. That I understand. But if the Illuminati is such a secret society, why do you guys know so much about them? Or the all-seeing eye of Lucifer. That is not the all-seeing eye of Lucifer. It is the all-seeing eye, also known as the eye of God. Not the eye of Lucifer at the top and that is why we see that symbolism on the back of our dollar bill and side note the roman numerals here on the bottom those stand for 1776 oh and everywhere else we look in today's society and the letter v is also very important to them because it represents the fifth age of man actually the fifth age of man that's not what this is the v in masonic symbology is for the nail or the Antichrist kingdom. Wrong. Actually, the fifth age of man is the coming of Jesus Christ for a thousand years. In the sixth age of man is when Lucifer and his followers come. Which we are currently living in. And that is why. That is true. We are, if you, according to the Greeks, we are in the fifth age of man, the Iron Age. But according to your Bible, we are not yet in the fifth age of man because Jesus has not returned. In the very next scene, we see the letter M become illuminated in Lucifer's light. Really? Lucifer's light? It's fire. Fire is red and orange. And the whole stage... It's called pyrotechnics. ...age is bathed in red, which is something they also love to do because it is the color of sacrifice, and it represents the blood baptism that one must take when joining Satanism. And Okay. I don't know a lot about Satanism. I have looked into it a little bit, but nowhere have I ever seen a blood sacrifice to join the church. 
And this is something that Maroon 5 and Adam Levine are very familiar with because in their music video Animals, we can see Adam Levine taking a bloodbath and he's like drenched in blood while he's fornicating with this woman. Really disgusting. But that is how a band like Maroon 5 gets into the position of playing the Super Bowl halftime show to begin with. Mm, I don't think so. If I remember right, I, I might be wrong. Um, they're playing because other people turned it down? Because they have proven their willingness to participate in these massive satanic rituals in front of millions of people like the blood baptism. So okay, first off, before I go any further... I've got to ask, do you actually know anything about the Church of Satan, or is this just what you're going off of because that's what you were told growing up as a Christian? Because if you look into the actual Church of Satan, it's nothing like this. So yeah, we can see that the stage is bathed in red, and Adam Levine is standing inside the V, or if you were to invert it, it would be the top of the pyramid representing... Why would you invert it? It's a V. He's standing at the front of the stage. Once again, the V in Masonry and Illuminati stands for a nail. ...him reaching the top, reaching the light of Lucifer. And what a coincidence that Maroon 5 just so happens to have an album called V that was released just a few years ago. Uh, Roman numeral of four. Five? Five. Five. Roman numeral V is five. Possibly their fifth album? Be my guess. And again, the V represents the fifth age of man, the fifth kingdom of the earth that was prophesied of in the Bible, in the book of Daniel, of which we are living in the fifth age, the age of the Antichrist. And then of course... We already went over this. Of course, it wouldn't be an Illuminati halftime Super Bowl show without the Masonic black and white symbolism. So, of course, the guitarist of Maroon 5 was in the black and white sweater. Maybe he just likes the sweater. Big surprise, real original. And then this was another very common theme for this year's Super Bowl was the effeminization of men. So of course we have two very girly men in the background wearing pink and red sweaters. And this is- What's girly about pink and red sweaters? Maybe this guy likes pink and this guy likes red. Another reason why Maroon 5 was the perfect pick for this year's Super Bowl, because it just does not get more effeminate, more metrosexual than Adam Levine. I mean, it was really hard to watch, to be honest. It was embarrassing. What's wrong with good grooming? Obviously, I'm... I have like to be hairy. But this is what they want men to be. They want them to be weak. They want men to be like women, women to be like men. They want to flip everything. No, they don't. Going off of, of your teachings from your Bible, women are to be subservient to men, not the other way around. So if they're going against your Bible, I could see where you would come up with that. But it's just not true. Women's rights nowadays are trying to become equal to men, but they're not trying to override men. It would make no sense if the Illuminati, which is heads supposedly the strongest people, most powerful and influential men in the world, why would they want to flip it on its head? Thing upside down, again with the inversion, the building up of one gender, one government, one monetary system, and ultimately one god, Lucifer. But Lucifer's not a god. According to your Bible, Lucifer was a falling angel, not a god. And exactly what is wrong with a one currency or a one government over the world? Worked really good in Star Trek. But anyway, moving on from that, we then once again have the illuminated pyramid inside the M, and this is right before... Alright, I've never seen a pyramid that's got these little cutouts here. And there, there's only two pyramids. If you're going back to ancient Egyptian, there are three at the, at the pyramids of Giza. One, two. Oh, if 
you want to invert it, there's your third one. But it's a V, not an inverted pyramid. Before the arrival of Travis Scott, who shows up in a flaming pit of hell to represent the arrival of the Antichrist. And they also show us this through the sounding of the trumpets, even though it's in the form of a silly cartoon. And they Which I was told was from Spongebob. They do that so nobody really takes it seriously, but it's more than obvious what they're trying to show here. Again, it's all about Bible prophecy and the sounding of the trumpets in the book of Revelation during the time of the Antichrist. Which is in the sixth age, not the fifth, according to your Bible. But at first they show the arrival of Travis Scott or the Antichrist as an asteroid that is headed towards the globe Earth. And then it Globe Earth? Glo oh, all right. I'm not touching flat Earth. I'm gonna leave that to Simon Dan. Fight the flat Earth. Red's rhetoric. Rhetoric. I'm gonna leave that. Them guys have got a grasp on it. They know what they're doing. I'm gonna leave the flat Earth to them. Shows it coming down on Mercedes Benz Stadium, which really isn't about the stadium, but more about the three pyramids that you can very clearly see here. And I um, maybe because that's the angle that the picture was taken. I bet you if you cut it from a different angle, there you could have four pyramids. You could have no pyramids. Take it from the top, probably don't see anything. It just happens to be where the angle from the camera was. You know, CGI coming in. I'm reading way too much into this. And I found this to be interesting because I just decoded IPEC GOAT, which is also filled with this type of predictive programming and symbolism. And the very last scene of that short film is asteroids that are coming down on the three pyramids as the Antichrist arrives on the scene. So these two shots here are just eerily similar, and I definitely thought... Eerily similar? Meteor... Pyramids, meteor, pyramids. Eh, you, you're pushing it. They, they are similar, but I really doubt they're meaning the same thing. I don't know what the I, whatever goat is. I don't think they were trying to copy the same thing. Thought it was worth noting. And if you haven't seen my video on iPet Goat 2, I will leave it linked up in the description. But yeah, so the asteroid is coming down through the roof of the Mercedes Benz Stadium. And right before. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's the, back this up just a second. Asteroid is coming down through the roof of the Mercedes Benz. Oh, look. It's the roof. Oh, wait a minute. There's your pyramids. I'm sorry. Stadium. And right before the asteroid becomes Travis Scott, we can see the illuminated V once again. Roman numeral five. And then this holographic asteroid turns into Travis Scott, who is singing in like a, a ring of fire. And then him and Adam. It's, it's a ring of fire because that's supposedly where the meteor struck, which causes a crater and usually catches the surrounding area on fire. That's not a pit of hell. Levine have this really embarrassing performance and it's like almost unwatchable it's so bad uh, but after that we see the red lights that are illuminated above the stage and this is to represent the fallen angels the 33 percent that were cast down onto the earth after they chose lucifer over god and why red why not green or pink maybe even blue why do you guys always go with red then after all of that satanic and Illuminati symbolism, they have the nerve to put a gospel choir on there. And this is a way, of course, to mock God. And it's also about the race war, the race baiting, the... Okay, i I be honest with you, I didn't watch this. I, like I said, I'm not a big Maroon 5 fan. I didn't care for the Super Bowl because I don't want to see the Patriots again. But perhaps the song he's singing actually has a choir in it. And race baiting and race wars, there's a white guy, there's a white girl. Granted, I, I will give you that most choirs are full of African Americans, and you see very few white Americans, but you're stretching.
race programming because for years now the NFL has been creating this race war that does not exist but it's all about divide and conquer and it's about order out of chaos. So they have to get us fighting amongst ourselves, arguing and hating on each other, and then we're looking to them for a solution. And their solution is love everything, tolerate everything, do what thou wilt. What's wrong with loving and tolerating everything? It doesn't seem like a bad way to go to me the satanic motto. Now I'm not saying unity is a bad thing, of course not, but they are promising a false unity, a false love. They want to get away with all their sick perversions and not have anybody say anything about it. So it has to be love everything, love everyone, never speak out against anything. And they do this through order out of chaos, dividing us, dividing and conquering, you know, same old, same old with them. Uh, but then again, we have more of this fallen angel imagery. Everybody's holding lanterns and they float up into the sky and they look like stars. Do you know anything about the Chinese lanterns? You, a lot of them, you, you hold your, your wishes, you write your wishes in them or you, you wish into those and you leave them up into the sky to go to your ancestors to help fulfill those wishes. And we know from the Bible that the fallen angels are referred to as stars many times. And then what do we see with the lanterns? They start forming words in the sky and it says one love. And this is the message of the Antichrist. Even though it might be hard for people to understand, the Antichrist is coming in the name of love, peace, and safety. That's how he's going to trick people into worshiping him. So that's why we see this love programming everywhere we look. How about he's just promoting love one another? Why does it got to be all antichristy? Because they want you to have no discernment whatsoever and to be afraid of passing judgment on anyone, no matter how heinous or abominable they are. They want to get away with their sickness, with their perversions. Okay, one love does not mean you can't contradict or call out somebody if they are doing something heinous. It's just to help stop the, the fighting. As human beings, why do we have to fight amongst each other? Your ideas are different from my ideas? Granted, I'll give you that. Or this guy, this girl right here, her views may be different than this girl's. But why would they have to fight about it? Why can't they have a civil conversation? A loving conversation? Why would it... Why, why do you necessarily... Necessarily always go to heinous crimes. Okay, so that's what the One Love movement is really all about. And it's all in preparation, you know, for the Antichrist. They want to condition people into accepting this Luciferian. That's if you shop on Amazon, you can use Wikibuy. It's a browser extension that automatically compares and there's really this Luciferian way of thinking. Okay, but anyway, after that, then Big Boy shows up from Outcast, and there's really, really wasn't a whole lot to that performance, I didn't think, but we did see uh, the jackets they were wearing say AT Aliens. Actually, which... does, it doesn't say AT Aliens, it says Atlians. A T L I E N S, Atlians, not AT Aliens. I guess is the name of Outkast's second album, but again, it's you're correct. It's a reference to the fallen angels who no, it's not. are now being called aliens. They're being called aliens by you guys. Your your the church is starting to call fallen angels aliens because they're trying to get away from the actual thought that we are the only planet in the entire universe that could sustain life, that there cannot be any actual extraterrestrial life out there. So you're going, oh, they're, they're, the aliens are actually angels. Uh, like Aleister Crowley said, the most famous Satanist of all time, he said, today we call them demons, tomorrow we will call them something else. And that- So that means they have to be aliens? Something else is aliens. There's no such thing as aliens. You don't know that. They are fallen angels. They are demons. You don't know that either.
nothing more, nothing less. Uh, but then we have Adam Levine towards the end here. He's throwing up the devil horns. One, two, three fingers does not make a devil horn. Those are devil horns. That's not. Of course, they had to fit that in there somewhere, somehow. And then right after that again, we see the illuminated pyramid, the illuminated V, whichever way you want to look at it, inside the big M. And then we got a real... Maroon 5. Real treat and got to see Adam Levine take his shirt off and gross everybody out who was watching. I don't know. People down on the stage kind of like it. Watching at home. Well, at least it did me. Uh, but the reason why they had him do this was more than just, you know, grossing people out. It was actually to show off all of his Illuminati, satanic, occultic tattoos. I mean... Looks like a lot of old school, traditional tattoos to me. I don't really see anything satanic there at all. Check this out. Here's just a couple of examples. I mean, first of all, the entire performance, it was all about fire. And here we can see him standing right in front of all these flames. And across his belly, it says California. So I think this is in reference to the California fires. No, no. He's had that California tattoo for a little while now. I actually looked that up. The fire is the pyrotechnics in the background. This just happens to be one still image from the entire concert. And, you know, the, the dew weapons that were used, the, the man-made weather technology that's being used against... Man-made weather technology? Oh, I'm going to get into that one us right now kind of rubbing it in our faces calling it the fire performance and a big old california right there across his stomach uh, but then we have the butterfly which of course is to represent uh mk ultra mind control and the transformation that the victims make through this ritualistic torture that they go through it's a butterfly i could see if it was a caterpillar then a butterfly but it's just a butterfly. Uh, and then after that... And probably to Adam, it probably means something a lot different. That we have the all-seeing eye right there. Not the all-seeing eye. Look at your pictures from way back down here. ...on his shoulder, but I guess that's just another giant coincidence as well. And he doesn't only have one giant all-seeing eye, he actually has two of them. And that one kind of looks to me like the Eye of Horus, but I, it's kind of blurry. It's hard to see. He has one right there on his shoulder, too. Just random eyeballs tattooed on his body. Yeah, just a coincidence, I'm sure. Uh, but then the show ends with the, with the stage being lit up like a giant rainbow. And this again is... One love. Love each other, love everyone else. And, yeah, wait for this one. It's a mockery of God. You know, the rainbow is God's promise to us. It was a covenant he made with us. He also made a covenant for men to cut the foreskins off their penises. And, uh, you know, the homosexual community has stolen that symbol and has perverted it to mean something completely different. Unity. Uh, and then it shows the Mercedes-Benz Stadium kind of blowing up, it looks like. Pyrotechnics, boom, fireworks, they leave smoky trails. So not sure if that's just more predictive programming. Um, there was a lot of this type of symbolism in the performance, so it could be something there, but I don't know. So overall, it was a pretty boring Super Bowl, and there, like I said, there wasn't really a ton of overt symbolism. Thanks for watching End of the Conspiracy. You know what to do. Click like and subscribe. Thanks.